Phil starts getting towards the business end of a, of a lot more events. Just sort of making the change over and getting used to it. He's going to get first chance here just as he works these out. Just a quick word for the other two players. We mentioned Sean Chipfield and Greg Patton. Sean Chipfield lost his first match yesterday, but then has built and built and built and, and got stronger and stronger as the, the group's gone on. And, you know, he's looking very good in another essentially semi-final. This is a final four because it's a group format. He's been in plenty of them, but not been able to quite break through. And obviously, that may well be on his mind that this is an opportunity to, to make that breakthrough to a final and potentially get your hands on that first individual trophy. Yeah, I think, I think he'll, you know, I think he'll fancy it. I think every player, you know, every player will fancy their chances, I think, in their own rights in this group. You know, there's, um, obviously, Stevie's the man of the year at the moment, but, you know, there is there is no, like, Poxies, McKills. You know, people are, obviously, you've got Phil, who was one of, the, one of the greats of the game beforehand, and he, but he hasn't quite started firing on this sort of format yet. And I think there's a case that all four players will think, you know, this this could be my time. Yeah, and, and just a quick word on the, the final player of the four in, in Greg Batten, obviously the, the last player to make it through. I think he's been fantastic, other than one shot, which I wouldn't say cost him a match, but it, it certainly halted momentum in his match where he, he was 3-0 up and missed an eight ball to go 4-0. Other than that one shot, it, he's been brilliant this weekend. And for me, it's probably as good as we've seen him since the, the very first year where he last made it through to a semi-final. Yeah, I mean, I've known Greg for a while. He's, he's a great player. Um, again, he's he's another one of them players that's that comes in the bracket that you know can beat anyone on the day. No one would be surprised if he won a tournament, and uh, you know just hasn't quite made that that breakthrough yet. But you know, again, it's a, he's another player in the bracket where you think it's only a matter of time, really. Well. Turning our attention then to this first match, Stevie Dempsey versus Phil Harrison, obviously in off the break for Stevie, but this chance isn't developing as Phil would have liked. He's got to work hard from here. It's still a race to six. It's still 30 minutes on the match clock. The golden breaks, golden ducks are still in play. Phil not happy. I think he wanted to get the cue ball further left and more than that, he's hampered queuing as well. <laughs> oh, it's a clever shot. Clever shot. Yeah, and that's and okay. It's worked perfect. out well. The eight ball goes down this bottom left. He might be he's just having a little look, might be a little bit tight, but definitely goes and he hasn't got a great deal, do a great deal to get on it. start this for Phil he can drop this eight ball in well, in fact he's had a close look at it twice tells us this maybe is a little bit tighter than it looks to us as Rob Warren shakes his head <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that centering yeah <laughs> he does like to tease us all Phil yeah he does he wears his heart on his sleeve that's for sure <laughs> an excellent start though for Phil which is the in-off break from Stevie Dempsey. Do you think it's an advantage for the three players that have come through having played this morning? I don't think it's a big one, but Stevie's hit one shot so far today, whereas Phil's already been out there and had to dig deep and put in a full match against Luke Gilbert. Yeah, possibly, possibly. And, and also, as you mentioned, like Steve, Stevie hasn't tasted defeat yet this weekend. And does that add a little bit, you know, is, it, is that a case is if, if he does lose here, does he sort of put him under a, a bit of pressure. I mean, it will put him under pressure in the group of four anyway, but, you know, it, everyone else is sort of dealing with they've lost and they've had to bounce back, whereas Stevie hasn't hasn't tasted that yet, you know. it's. I think it's just, you know, they'll just all be playing the matches and treating them as fresh. But uh, I know what you're saying, uh, you know, Phil's had his hand on the table today and 
Stevie's still not 100% sure how, he, how he's going to turn up today. You know, today's a different day, but he's normally pretty solid. Yeah, we're about to find out, though. That's a, a very tough in-off break for Phil Harrison. Parks the cue ball and then bumps straight into that top corner. But, Rob, dry anyway. Correct. A lot easier to take when it's dry. Unless a couple of balls I, I didn't quite catch. I just saw the white going, but sometimes you get kissed in and balls are going in that direction off the pocket and the white stops and get kissed in. But nine times out of ten, if you're going off and it's dry anyway, I feel it's a lot, a lot easier to take. <laughs> as easy as it can be. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Stevie's chosen reds. Just the one red just needs a little bit of help, but he's got the easiest way of helping it. Two to nearest the right centre pocket. When he pots the bottom one of those two, he can just slightly nudge the other one or nudge the yellow. It should open up and, and free up the other red. shot however does that red pass in the center I think it goes in off the yellow if not just miss the other red and can't really miss it as long as he misses the red he's taking one up top instead top right yeah no shot they <laughs> covered each other again that one does go though surely yeah, he's fine. I think if he absolutely had to, he could always play it off the yellow. Yeah. Oh, I can get through to the other one. Camera angle, fold us again. Very good from Stevie Dempsey. He responds to the reverse clearance from Phil with one of his own. They're all square after one. And I ask the question whether the fact that Stevie's not played today will have a factor. I'd say it doesn't make any difference right now because that was started in fine style for him. First chance at the table. These two played each other in a memorable match in the Pro Series earlier on this year. Stevie went on to win the title. He was down and out against Phil. One of the most amazing comebacks you will ever see. Phil just a little bit of mismanagement of the clock as well at the back end, costing him. break cue ball was tracking top right hand corner you want to start to control that that's better not quite the explosion he was expecting but they've still split really nicely that red to the bottom right may have just gone a roll too far yeah. to be potable the way he's reacting tells us definitely
In fact, if that red had pulled up two rolls less than yellows were absolute sitters and it still will be yellows, but he does have that one problem to solve. That's not gone to plan because he wanted yellow to right center to develop the red and yellow together in the bottom right hand corner whilst he had one near the left center to be on. Yeah, I think he might still be okay. He might still be able to pop the outside yellow and, and still come down into this red and yellow down here. Yeah, he's fine. Oh, but he's stuck. Which means he's got to take this one long now, which is a big shot. Visit to the table, this from Stevie. <laughs> Just an incredible finish once again. Worked very hard at the start of it. Gets himself in front, reverse clearance, brake clearance, back to back. And Stevie Dempsey is in front for the first time in this group of four. Just an incredible run that he's been on this year. It really has been. This is the, the run of results. He's runner-up to Tom Cousins, runner-up to Tom Cousins. That's event three and four at the Pro Series. Runner-up to Craig Warningham in the Champions League. He had a, an early exit. Sorry, excuse me, he won event five of the Pro Series, then an early exit in event six, then he won event seven, and then a last 16 in event eight. I mean, what a run that is. Three runner-up runner -up finishes and two titles, as well as obviously this run at the Players' Championship, all in that same time frame. Yeah, remarkable season. dry for Phil. First chance then for Stevie to separate a little bit here, although again, red and yellow just stopping together in the bottom left-hand corner, just making there be a little bit of work here. If that red tra travels one more roll, the yellows are, are sitting there for him again. Yeah, Phil, seemed, somebody, you did say to me outside before, he seems to be well, he's certainly thinking that he's struggling with the break and can't get a ball. We have seen him quite a few. He's not been completely dry all the time, but that's definitely how he's feeling. That it's. Uh, I think he not remembers for him. Yeah, I think he remembers the missed, you know, the, the the ones that go wrong or the the dry breaks more than he does the successful ones. Because I don't feel like it's been a big talking point this weekend as in his breaks being weak compared to the other players no. that have made it through to the final four I think they've all had their moments where it's been going well and their moments where it's, it's just stopped on them a little bit I don't feel like the break is a big factor and obviously it's always a factor in terms of who's going to get the chances but I don't feel like we're we're looking at one guy really struggling with his break here no 
No, not at all. In, in, in fact, you know, I'd say Stevie's got the best break and the four, and the other three are sort of like chopsing and changing, you know, and, and sometimes it's working. I mean, Chippy's obviously been changing his, Phil's been changing his. Greg's looks pretty solid, but I've also seen, you know, I think it was the last pro series he was on the table next to me and seen a couple of monst monster dry breaks from him. And, you know, but out of them three, nothing really stands out to say any of them are exceptionally breaking well or bad, so. Yeah, it's, uh, agree with everything you just said. I think Stevie's break has just been flying, isn't it? I mean, you can't have the results he's having this year without having success with the break. Obviously, the, the game around it's been magnificent. And a quick reminder, if you didn't know already, we've mentioned it plenty of times, he will become the number one player with victory today. But only victory today will do it. Yeah, what an achievement. Not only if you, you've won this event, another event with Ultimate Pool, but to go number one in the rankings after the season Tom Cousins has had, what an achievement. Yeah, in the same time frame that Stevie's had three run-up finishes and two titles, Tom's won three titles. Of course, Tom's is on the back of winning three titles at the back end of last year as well. The rankings are over two years. Tom came into the year as the number three, Stevie as the number four. They are now separated at the top of the rankings, although Chris Manning is still in with a chance of the big finish in November's Pro Series to have a chance of that number one ranking once again. He was very close last year. And very close this year with a big finish. Of course, we're talking about Chris Manning. He's the with Shane Thompson being knocked out. He remains the only player to have won every year with Ultimate Pool. So big finish required from Shane at the end of the year to try and join that, that list. Nobody else can achieve it. He's struggling here now, surely. I think he needed an angle to go in. Can't get on that, surely. Doesn't go, I don't think. I think he needed an angle. Shot yeah, it looks a strange one, but trying to force an angle that's not there with rakes a reverse side. Mine's playing tricks on me and I thought it was a foul. <laughs> but I must be miles away. I couldn't understand why Phil hadn't got the white, but
good shot. Play this one down the rail now. Free the pocket up. Has it? Ratchin tells us it hasn't. He's not really gone round to have a look, but it doesn't look like it on our screens. No. And he's still okay. He can play short position here. Do you think he's straight enough just to nip straight across the table, or do you think he has to come underneath it? On this table, possibly. Looks like the angle's maybe slightly too much, but he can just screw past the, the eight ball with a bit of right hand side off the back rail and come back through the gap of the red and yellow. Tries to get there straight and overdoes it. Oh dear. And this time, every right to be frustrated where he's landed because he's not on anything. Just didn't quite nip into it enough, did he? It was tough. Steve would be delighted to get back at the table, even if he hasn't been left a, an easy chance here. He's got a chance to take it on still and play a sort of halfway, sort of two-way shot as well. Yeah, he'll, he'll top the yeah. white through to not leave Phil um, a shot on the red. But even if he had to play an out-and-out -out safety, he'd just be thrilled to get to the table because he would have expected to lose the frame when he walked away. to be honest, I'm quite surprised. Solid hit. Interesting to see what Stevie does here. He can take this on. He could play an out and out safety as well. If he takes it on, I feel he has to leave the red on to be able to get on the eight ball. Certainly get on the eight ball anywhere near nicely. I'd be very surprised if he takes the pot on here. He has. I just don't see what value he had in taking the pot on there. I just, he, he couldn't possibly leave the red. He just play across and well, I'm very surprised at that. A lifeline for Phil. Yeah, Phil Harrison gets the lifeline and ties the scores up at 2-2 two -two and this match has gone at a slow pace. We're at 2-2 with under 10 minutes to go and 15 seconds a shot. Yeah, and Stevie's missed probably more pots than he's missed all weekend. Albeit not easy ones. Yeah, I, I, even though he took that one on and I know what you're saying with the value, I, I think the safety may have been the percentage play, but I still expected him to make it. Yeah, I just think from where he was on the cushion, I just, I just don't think there was any need to go for the shot whatsoever. Phil's looking to get into his second final of the year. He made the final of Pro Series 1, coming up short against Tom Cousins. Of course, he has won the Masters with ultimate ball. As the pool gods punishing for the previous frame. <coughs> Dry break. 
Yeah, decent enough chance here on yellows. Yeah, it's not too bad. Just a little bit awkward on his first shot. It's okay, just that little tiny flick on the red has just made it okay. Good chance for Phil this. Final 10 and 15 a shot, which is certainly not Phil's comfort zone. But this is all there for him. Key shot from here, you feel. Just needs to avoid the reds and try and get down somewhere near the straight on the yellow to left center. Won't want to leave it too high. Yeah, he's not happy. I think he would have loved another two or three rolls on that just to make it really simple, just to be able to pop the cue ball out past the, the eight ball. Doing it that way means he had to use the bottom cushion as well. Judged it well. Just got to watch it doesn't flick this red on the way back off the cushion, cover the black. Yeah, he's played it very thin. Uh, will he go for the pot or will he go for the double? Looks like he's playing the double. He is, and in it goes. Phil Harrison in front. And he has the next break as well. Seven minutes still to go here. <laughs> it's not happy. Not happy, but he's in front. <laughs> yeah. You want to be either player will get to six here. It will be a case of get yourself in front and hold on. Big match coming up straight after this one. The final two players in our group of four will get their semi-final lineup campaign underway. Sean Chipperfield and Greg Batten. We'll then take a break for a couple of hours. We'll be back for the evening session. See the final four games from this group of four. And of course, the big final later on tonight. Too bad, Phil. Much better break. Three or four balls. Extension call. Chance for Phil to really turn the screw here. comes down for this one here is the bottom of the table because it was the, the trickiest of the, the yellows although still not too tricky to land on and how simple as it gets for a player of Phil's level even at 15 seconds a shot
two clear. Four frames to two. Five minutes to go now. Playing some good stuff out there is Phil Harrison. Taking it to Stevie, who will have the next break and he needs to find it. The last couple of breaks have not really worked for him. First match in these groups is so vital for these players. Gives you a chance to believe you just need to go through, keep it simple and you make it through. Whereas the loser of this match will feel like they need to win their final two games and possibly might even lead to six red shootouts whatever else so first match is always huge break There's a lot going on in that shot there, but that's all worked out really nicely for him. Trying to knock these in as quickly as possible. Save every second possible. And he's the man behind. Very different to seeing how he'd be going about this clearance if he was one in front. He saves 3.24 left on the clock. And back with him one. Part of the thinking there, I think, is with, with going, you know, you want to save every second because you don't know what happens. You're going to need them potentially, but also... It's Phil's break now, and he's thinking if Phil breaks dry, you know, as much as he'd, if you offered him a draw right now, I think he'd take it. But if Phil breaks dry, he's thinking I've got time here to take that clearance out and have the next break as well. Still belief from Stevie's side of the table that he can get the win, but I'm sure he'd be happy with a draw. Make a ball, run the clock down. With 3.24 left, if he makes a ball, he can't quite see the match out. It's right in that awkward 20 seconds less, and he probably can just about. So he needs to be clever. He needs to either, if he makes a ball, he needs to be clever. Do you make the finish? Do you keep it tight? Do you pop balls? He needs to figure out what's best, depending on the layout of the table but first thing is make a ball and he's done just that Three. and it is an interesting layout one problem red one problem yellow Possibly two yellows, yellow below the left center and the one top left. So the red just has this one top right. And Phil could get to it straight away. So it's not a big problem. Reds are all there. 
Yeah, nice shot, forced across. Tricky shot this, but... Yeah, well played. Doesn't want to cover them reds with the eight ball. And he has. Now, what's he got? Got the double, He's maybe? Got double. He's made it. Very good shot. Appreciated by Stevie. I think Stevie thinks that might be the moment his chances in this match go. Just could have waited to take, take a bit more time off Phil Good then and, and just make sure these are pretty much a procession. So yeah. I'm not sure why he's not draining the clock down a little bit more. You know, there's probably 20 seconds less he could have taken off. Another five or six then, so you could probably have shaved this down to around about the minute mark. You know, them extra 30 seconds are, are massive, you know, you can, you can break him clear in 30 seconds. Yeah, uh, you know, it doesn't seem much. It's an excellent clearance, has to be said by Phil. Excellent opening shot and double, but that extra 20 to 30 seconds there that he hasn't necessarily wasted could be the difference between him having a little bit of sweat at the end of this match and not. Who knows what happens on the next break? You know, Stevie might make a very quick break clearance and put the pressure on, or it might even be a golden break. It, you know, nine times out of ten, it won't make any any difference here. He's in a very strong position, but it could just come back to haunt him a little bit. for the cup break. He's made a ball, so chance for that quick finish. He knows it needs to be ultra quick as well. Phil, he has to leave 30 plus seconds here. That's not worked. Overcut it, can you believe that? He won't, knows it's over though. Had to be an ultra quick finish or it wasn't going to be for Stevie Dempsey. He tastes defeat for the first time.